Hey guys, quick announcement before you watch the video. This Home Alone video is going up a little bit earlier than it would. I know it's a bit weird because we just launched the site, but due to some odd circumstances, the next two John Drum videos are going to go to YouTube and Norm Boots at the same time. But when it gets to March again, it's Normal Boots exclusive. So for now... Nothing like the smell of nog on Christmas Eve, eh, Shock? That's racist. This year, I'm getting nuts. Every other year I play it safe. Not this year. I'm getting nuts. Hell yeah, boy. Let's do this. Time to get nuts. You feel me? You feel me on this? You know, it never really struck me before, but I'm starting to think there might be a pretty big species divide between you and I. A very, very different interpretations on what getting nuts means. Now some grandmothers are known to be on the same level, getting a roasted nut or two for the holidays. But this raw shit, that's nuts. Oopsie. You like nuts, Jack? I'll show you how to cook up a nut. You smell it? It's pure. It's Christmas spirit. I see friends shaking. <laughs> Singing, how do you fuck? Mmm, you smell that? It smells like the Hamptons in January. <laughs> Fish coming fresh off the water. <laughs> You'll miss me when I'm gone. Christmas to do. You doing uh you doing alright there? You look uh yeah, you look, you look a little different. <laughs> ah, what is it with these fucking nuts? McCully? Is that you? That's me! I'm here to tell you it's not too late! You still have a chance! Jesus, what happened to your face? You doing alright? I'm dead. I mean, honestly, seeing you in interviews, you seem like a great guy. You've got a bit of a corpse face. John, it's January 25th. You slept for a month. You slept through Christmas and starved your bird out. All right, Kronos. If I'm expected to believe it's January 25th, then why does my calendar say it's December 25th? Auto Domini, you're my lord, bitch. Uh-oh. By the way, I'm trying to help you here. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore how hurtful that last statement was about the corpse face and help you undo this thing. I shouldn't now. I shouldn't, but I'm gonna because I'm a good person. I didn't do that much drugs and my dad stole my money. The only way to bring your dead friend back is to find a good game from the Home Alone franchise, which is, there's a lot of them, so good luck. I need it. Please help me now. I got a couple two tree pookies on me and a few late car payments. Find the game, please. Start your search for answers here. Home Alone 1 on the NES? You know how many hours of my life you wasted with the- Home Alone, a franchise based entirely off this face. See, this one's a classic. They knew what they were doing. First one's got the face. Second one got away from the face. Yeah, you can't get away from the face. Third one didn't have the face, and that's why Jonathan Taylor Thomas or whoever the fuck this is didn't have such a good time. Around number four, they realized what they were doing wrong. They got the face back, got the face going, rating skyrocketed. But see, the problem with this one, they got earnest in this one. I mean, what, what, are, they, what are they trying to do? Bring him back from the dead? That's disrespectful. Five, though. Oh, that's this one's the classic one. The holiday heist. Now, look at that. Look at that face. It's beautiful! Mm. Oh, 
This one's for the Criterion Collection. They even got Malcolm McDowell. I'm sure they walked up to him. They didn't have to do any explaining. He said, uh, I'm Malcolm McDowell. I, I've worked with the greatest. I've worked with Kubrick. I've been at Clockwork Orange. Get the fuck out of my house. He asked me if I do a holiday heist. You, would you ask me? Do you want the best caviar on the planet? You don't ask a man a question like that. Get the fuck out of my mansion. The later Home Alone films were just cash-ins on the series, but the first two were actually really good films. They were written by John Hughes, directed by Chris Columbus, who would go on to make the first two Harry Potter films, hilariously, and Guy only goes in twos. And the music was composed by the one and only John Williams. So naturally, they made a bunch of games to capitalize on the hype. Do any of them stand to capture the childlike and whimsical essence of the films? Let's find out, because apparently that's the first step to getting my bird back, according to the actor of the titular films, Macaulay Culkin. Where is that pasty ass skeletal motherfucker? Is he getting his ectoplasm on my toothbrush? I swear to fucking god. Let's take a look at Home Alone 1 for the NES first. What? This game is made by Bethesda? Like Skyrim Bethesda? Yeah, it actually is. The same Bethesda that made Skyrim and Fallout 3 made Home Alone 1 for the NES. Weird. In this game, unsurprisingly, you play as Kevin, and uh, you wander around your house without parents, I guess. I mean, come on, you gotta give them some credit, that's pretty true to the film's core message. Ah, look at this, they got people walking by. I didn't know they had AI street tech in the 19... Oh, Jesus, he's in my house! Okay, so that's terrifying. In the movies, the villains are in it for the valuables, but here, they seem to be only interested in Kevin. Where's Chris Hansen and that suspiciously benign plate of cookies when you need him? You know what, I don't want this cookie, I just want to get to the beach. Come here, just one second. It's just, that's just about right. That's appropriate. A boy is captured and will likely be found dead in the coming weeks, and all you got is, oh no. It's good, it's got a good message. So the point of the game, and I'm being generous here with that statement, seems to be walk around, pick up random objects, and place them as traps to halt the kidnappers. I can barely tell what's going on in this game. We got stuff like spider, toy car, what's this, potato? Did I just pick up a fucking potato to stop robbers? Oh, well there's the light bulb for it at least, that's good. Now I can knock them out with my impressive science skills. Brinks new home potato security. Are those, are those nails? Why can't I pick these up? There are real robbers in my house. There are real hardened criminals in my house and about. I'm pretty sure nails would be infinitely more useful than potato. Hmm, I see Michael Jackson made such a big impact on Macaulay Culkin, they put the moonwalk in the game. <laughs> Let's grab the spider, because, you know, that's not completely terrifying or anything. Oh shit, put it down, put it down, put it down! Oh, yeah! Did I just trip up that robber with a spider and then do a moonwalk? That's it! This is the best game ever! Show the song and dance! <laughs> Okay, even though this is clearly just, hmm, right, one of the most sublime games ever created, I'm gonna go ahead and try to nitpick a bit. I think I'll start with, what the hell is going on with anything? The perspective is completely bonkers. What's going on? What's this? What am I standing on? Is that my house? Is, is that another house across the street, or is that a subterranean lair? Home Alone? Well, this is more akin to a Mobius strip. It's like a Klein bottle up in here. <laughs> you better uh, fill it up with hot tar, pour it on those pesky intruders. If that wasn't enough for you and your entire lineage, they also made Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. This music's giving me a fever dream of Macaulay Culkin's goddamn gremlin head. Ah! Get it out of here. In memory of Tom Height. Poor bastard. The last thing this guy worked on in his life. All the things he did just funneled down to Home Alone 2 on the NES. For his sake, I hope it's better than Home Alone 1. I guess this is supposed to be Tim Curry's character, given that he plays the concierge that's after Kevin in the movie. Hmm, Tim, you've been eating your vegetables? You don't look yourself. Literally. At all. So right off the bat, this game's a lot better than the last one. Take that for what you will. At least you're just dealing with left and right. No theoretical physics in this version. But that doesn't mean they put much thought into it. As you can see, they've gone into painstaking detail to recreate Kevin McAllister's signature goiter hump. You can almost smell the ointment. I don't know, what do you put on goiter? Sam? Sam? But let's not forget the real star of the show, the fact that you can pull this shit. Yeah! Pete Townsend! Risky business! And the platoon! Risky business again! This game is goddamn madness. Everything wants to kill you just for the street cred. Possessed luggage, Frankenstein's monster, bloody mops, even horches. Who's running this hotel? The Adams Family? 
Let me tell you, in my experience, only two kind of old ladies can move like that. Retired Russian Olympians and witches. You see that right there? That's a parabola. Now only a witch can pull up a parabola of this nature. I think this establishment's got bigger problems on its hands than Kevin McAllister running around with a fake credit card. The main point of this game seems to be to make a mad dash to the end of the level. But when you get there, the elevator doors are closed. I don't know what to do. You can get these, uh, what appear to be a necklace of pearls. I guess we might as well try to take out some of the enemies with it. Maybe that'll lead us in the right direction. BAM! Oh, well, okay, that didn't do anything. Okay, I guess it's more of a trap than a projectile. Gotta use the old McAllister wits here. Come here, chubby checker! Time to do the twist! He just walked right over my beads like it was nothing. Yeah, I hate this game. It doesn't even let me have fun when I try. This game automatically goes on my shit list because keys kill you. What kind of sadism is this? These are deeply rooted conventions, man. You don't mess with this stuff. And this game came out way after things like Legend of Zelda. All right, they had time. It turns out you're actually supposed to bang on the elevator button a bunch of times to get the elevator to come, which I guess is about accurate. I mean, usually when you're trying to call an elevator, you just do it like... This is a video game, though! How was I supposed to know I had to wait for the elevator? This isn't some experimental indie game! It gave me no indication it was even coming. Let's move on to the SNES. That's one of my favorite systems. It's gotta be a good Home Alone game on that. Ugh, that's better already. Decent graphics, and at least it plays like an actual video game. Whoa, hold up. Look at that giant emerald ring on the dresser over there. You could pawn that off and buy Kenya. It's no wonder people are trying to rob this guy's house all the time. Okay, first off, uh, who, who is this cartoon mobster here and why does no one care that he's in my house? Is he just a weird family member? Is he my dad? Is, it, is, that, my, is that my game dad? Also, I'd just like to point out that this bowling ball placement is exquisite. So basically, the point of this fun kids SNES game is to run around and collect valuables from your house and then when you collect them, deposit them into these safes which drop the items into a... Sex dungeon? What is the significance of this? Is that a giant vault in their basement? Who has a giant vault in their basement? I really have no idea why I'm supposed to do this. I, I can't figure it out. If you, if, you, if you can't figure out how to play Home Alone 1 on the SNES right away, what? It's bad! It's redo the game! Throw it out! Redo the fucking game! Also, for some reason, every item you deposit always turns into a candelabra. Was Liberace the executive producer for this game or something? Seriously, why? I'm picking up emerald rings, sacks of money, but it always turns into a golden candelabra! Why does it always turn into a candelabra?! Okay, seriously. You're gonna tell me that a community of right-minded adults made a game about a 10-year-old boy and then decided that the best course of action would be to have the game over screen be a naked picture of him? Let it be known that this is actually the only part of the movie where he touches his face and screams and it's when he's applying nakedly aftershave, applying it- Ah! Ho ho ho, looks like they caught old Kevin after all. His tricks and toy cars weren't enough to keep the fully grown robbers with more developed brains at bay. Is there a single good Home Alone thing after Home Alone 2 the movie? Exception, of course, to Episode 5 Holiday Heist, uh, highly regarded as the strikes back of the series, of course. Certainly not the Game Boy version. It's really just the same thing as the SNES version with a few marked improvements that I'll go over right now. For one thing, when you shoot the mobster, he turns into Michael Jackson Moonwalker. <laughs> Still got that bowling ball, though. That's how you know it's authentic. Maybe there's hope in Home Alone 2 for this nest. But probably not no hope in here. Probably ain't no hope for the life of everyone. This is exactly the same game as the one for the NES. But this one has much better JPEG. You can tell by the fact that Tim Curry looks like he has less jaundice in this one. But unfortunately, they didn't find out how to make him look like Tim Curry yet. Oh my god! I think they've literally just cut out Joe Pesci's head and pasted it on this cartoon body. Look at the clipping on the peacoat! But don't get me started on Daniel Stern here. He looks like he's trying to cork out a hard shit he's been brewing in his ass for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Most everything here is the same, bar the graphical upgrade. Except this lady's different! Also, I think this bear is tripping balls with that dog down there. That is the face of someone who's seen some shit. I don't know what I'm gonna do! Not even a single one of these games can be considered passable! Who made these?! Who was paid money to make these?! Shit! Wait! There is... 
one more game. The rarest game of them all, only released in Europe for the PlayStation 2. And that's like 10 years newer than the SNES. They must have figured out how to make a good Home Alone game by then. I mean, they fucked up every other time. You can only fuck up so many times before someone fires you. Let's do this. I gotta save my best friend. Oh yeah, the 20th Century Fox logo. You always know you're in for something good when you see that. Oh, oh, are you serious? Is that something that someone who calls himself a professional artist actually made and handed to their boss and the boss went, yeah, that looks good, do that. Oh my god. This isn't some sort of hacked game. This is a real game with real box art and real money that was exchanged by real people to really fucking own it on PlayStation 2. Oh my god, this looks like something you'd see an 11 year old post on DeviantArt. Look at this house. Now look at this house bordering the text. I could literally make this in Photoshop in like two minutes tops. Here, no, I'll do it. I'll do it right now. I did it. I literally, I literally made the exact same thing with a mouse and zero experience in art. Don't you remember these iconic characters from the film? Kelly? Carl? Carly? My, my favorite scene with them was this one. What is this? What am I doing? I'm alone, but I'm not in a home. I'm in some botanical garden. Also, why is this taking place during summer? Did anyone on this, and I use this phrase loosely, team of developers watch the film before sitting down and making the game? I know they had to put it together in one whole weekend, but damn, son. That is some serious commitment to being unfaithful to your source material. You spend more time in this game walking around locking doors than you do laying traps for the bad guys. Excuse me, you could, you could turn the effects down in this game? What effects? This game has effects that you can turn off? So basically, you go around attempting to attack the two burglars with various things you find laying around. My personal favorite is the spider. Because you just throw a fucking spider at them. You, ju you just throw another living being at their face. I can't believe this is a real game. It's no wonder they didn't release this game outside of Europe. The box art. The... I'm... I I, I mean no exaggeration by this. The box art is literally the best part about this game. How did this happen? No, seriously, how did this game happen? It was released in 2006. That's like 10 years after Home Alone was even relevant anymore. Why did anyone opt to make this game? Was there some sort of interdimensional being they had to keep at bay by making a new Home Alone game? Well, I guess that's it. I'll never see Jacques again. There's not a single redeemable game in this entire library! Wait a second. I can see clearly now, the rain is gone. Come on, come on, I, I must have missed something. I mean, there were so many different competing companies back in the 90s that- Sega! That's it! Home Alone for Sega Genesis! Well, this may be one of the first times that the Sega versions of a game are better than their SNES counterparts. But the Home Alone games on Sega are pretty sweet. At least compared to the horror that I just witnessed. Tight graphics, novel gameplay, Kevin looks and controls just as you'd expect him to. And you know what? In the case of two, this is a pretty accurate rendition of New York City as far as the Sega Genesis goes. I found it! Macaulay, wake up! Come on, wake up, come on. Get out that stove corn. Shit, I hallucinated all that, didn't I? <laughs>